On April 14, 2023, two friends, 32-year-old Syraporn Khan Wong and 36-year-old Sararat Rangsaiwathaporn, commonly known as M, arrived at the Meklong River Bank in Ratchaburi, Thailand, to release fish into the river. This act of kindness, a virtuous deed, essentially constituted a traditional Buddhist ceremony. A surveillance camera captured Saira Porn as she walked along the riverside pier, carrying the fish. She appeared lively and perfectly healthy. However, just moments later, Saira Porn collapsed and passed away. Bystanders attempted to help her, but it was already too late. The sudden loss of her daughter during a routine outing with a friend shocked Saira Porn's mother. She shared her suspicions with the police because her daughter had recently become friends with M. Furthermore, she was troubled by the disappearance of her daughter's belongings, an expensive handbag, around 40,000 baht in cash, a little over $1,000, and two mobile phones. The police initiated an investigation and attempted to gather details from M about the incident. Surprisingly, M claimed that she wasn't with her friend during the river incident. However, surveillance footage painted a different picture, when bystanders tried to save Syraporn's life, her friend fled in the opposite direction. Only after irrefutable evidence was presented, did M admit that she was at the river during the Buddhist ceremony. Forensic experts examined Syraporn's blood and stomach contents, confirming investigators and the deceased's family's suspicions by detecting traces of cyanide in her kidneys. M was arrested on April 25th, and during a search of her house, a bottle of cyanide was found. When news of Syraporn's suspicious death reached the media, several other families contacted the police, suddenly realizing that their loved ones had also died after last being seen in M's company. M was a graduate of Nakhon Patam Rajabat University, located slightly west of Bangkok. During her time there, she didn't stand out, and her professors cannot recall anything unusual about her appearance or behavior. She obtained her diploma in 2009 and became a specialist in the field of public relations. From 2012 to 2022, over the course of 10 years, she worked as a representative for at least three leading insurance agencies in the Thai market. Investigators were relieved to find out that there were no insurance claims made for any of the 12 policies M had sold. M was married to a police officer named Witun Rangsaiwathaporn, with whom she lived until 2022. During this time, Witun rose to the rank of a lieutenant colonel, and the couple had two children. They lived in an apartment provided by the police force, where their neighbors were fellow police officers. Neighbors remember M as reserved and only interacting with well-off police families. In 2022, the couple separated, fairly amicably, as they continued to live together for some time afterward. However, by the end of 2022, M started seeing a 35-year-old man named Satizak Poonkwan. The two were expecting a child, as M was four months pregnant. Unfortunately, on March 12, 2023, her boyfriend unexpectedly passed away, leading the police to now believe that he too fell victim to poisoning. After having dinner, Satizak suddenly lost consciousness, at a gas station. He was taken to the hospital, discharged, but unfortunately passed away the next day. Later, it became known to investigators that M had called her ex-husband, who came to her from Bangkok to Udon Thani. The former spouses got into Satizak's car and without much hesitation, they went to apply for a loan, using the car as collateral. After that, they attempted to visit people to whom Satizak had lent money, and tried to collect all these debts. In reality, M wanted to gain much more after her boyfriend's death. A representative from the insurance company contacted the police and shared that M had wanted to insure the man's life for 7 million baht or $200,000, but the regular insurance premium would have been 1,000 baht or $28, and she decided against pursuing this idea. With each new piece of information about M, investigators grew more horrified. Fifteen friends, aged 33 to 45, who had previously never complained about their health, suddenly fell ill after spending time with M. Fourteen of them passed away shortly after being in her company. 
This group even included two police officers. Police Major Nipasanjan passed away on April 1, 2023, due to respiratory and cardiac failure. She collapsed immediately after going with M to pray at Prapatam Cherdi in Nakhon Patam. The police shared surveillance footage that captured the poisoning incident, and watching it is an emotional experience. Nipo was sitting on a bench when she suddenly became unwell. She curled up hit her head fell to the ground and lay motionless. What was her friend M doing at that moment? She was talking on the phone, with her hand resting on her side. At some point, she walked away from Nipa, completely ignoring her. She didn't even make an attempt to pretend to help. But was it worth expecting any semblance of care from her, considering she had already claimed 12 victims? Police Captain Kunda Torai didn't fare well after befriending M either. Kunda had just borrowed money from her friend before she was found lifeless in her car on August 10, 2022. There were no signs of trauma on her body. The car's dashcam, smartwatch, iPad, and mobile phone had all disappeared. The earliest murder linked to M dates back to 2015, involving the death of Montatip Kauin, known to everyone as Sai. M and Sai had been friends since childhood. While Sai wasn't exactly wealthy, she often lent various amounts of money to M. After marrying a foreigner, Sai moved to another country. However, in 2015, she returned to Thailand, and M picked her up from the airport in her car upon her arrival. Soon after, Sai passed away due to acute heart failure. Sai's mother remembers that M quickly intervened at the time, supposedly to handle her financial matters as per Sai's husband's request. Sai's family was shocked by her sudden death but believed it was fate. Yet, when news of M's accusations surfaced, they contacted the police, suspecting a connection, especially considering M had abruptly cut off all communication with Sai's family. As far as investigators know, after this incident, M refrained from committing crimes until 2020. However, from 2020 to 2023, 13 of her friends died. The symptoms they experienced were associated with cyanide poisoning. Some of them passed away after lending money to the suspect, while others had valuable items go missing. Kantima Pezard, who lent a substantial sum of money to M, believes that she could have been the 15th victim of the serial poisoner known as M cyanide, as dubbed by journalists. Kantima had recently become friends with M. They went together to a large shopping center, but about a week before this, Kantima lent M 250,000 baht, approximately $7,000. While shopping, Kantima complained of a sore throat and feeling under the weather. While shopping, Kantima complained of a sore throat and feeling under the weather. M then gave her a cough medicine, likely of herbal origin. Kantima took the medicine, got into her car, and started driving home when she suddenly felt a heaviness in her chest. She attempted to call M, but M ignored her call. Fortunately, Kantima managed to reach the emergency medical hotline. By the time help arrived, she had stopped breathing, but medics were able to nearly bring her back to life. M never communicated with her again and didn't return the money. Now, of course, Kantima is certain that she could have become one of M's victims if help hadn't arrived in time. She reported her story to the police. M. Cyanide's motive confirms the conclusions of a criminological study that suggests the motive of female serial killers is often driven by the desire for enrichment or gain from people close to them. In contrast, for male serial killers, the motive is usually tied to satisfying their intimate needs and preying on victims. M. Cyanide was addicted to gambling and had a an desperate need to continue funding her addiction. She regularly visited gambling websites, and the police reported that somehow she lost nearly 1 million baht in a single day, which is approximately $28,000. Overall, the woman spent around 78 million baht on her addiction, over $2 million, which she obtained from her victims. Some of the money went toward paying off debts and obligations that M had accumulated due to her addiction, but not all of them were settled, and she continued to gamble with the rest. Law enforcement officers tried to identify the recipients of these funds and determine if any of these people were involved in the murders. 
While it's evident they weren't involved in the murders, the police are dismayed by the fact that online gambling websites continue to flourish in Thailand, generating significant profits for organized crime in the country and causing immense suffering for those who fall into their traps. The natural question arises, how did M convince her well-off acquaintances to give her money? After all, some of them had known her only recently, and it's unlikely that they would trust a new acquaintance so much. In reality, some people had known her since childhood, while others trusted her as a police officer's wife. Many of the victims were involved in financial schemes resembling pyramid schemes that M was part of. She would enter the lives of these affluent individuals, gaining their trust before various means of obtaining their money, including pyramid schemes, lottery fraud, shady investments, or simply borrowing money. Often, she would ask for small sums, and perhaps her well-off friends felt uncomfortable refusing her. Furthermore, in several cases, she managed to gain financial benefits even after poisoning her victims. For example, she assured the relatives of the deceased that she would handle all their affairs, gaining control. When victims inquired about getting their money back, she would invite them to lunch or on a trip and then introduce cyanide. Why didn't anyone notice that over a dozen acquaintances of M had died under suspicious circumstances? Because the poisoner operated in different provinces of the country, and until 2023, none of these cases were investigated. It's also important to note that the poisoner wasn't always in immediate proximity to the victims. For instance, Nimna Kit, the wife of a doctor, passed away after ingesting a tablet sent to her by the poisoner via mail. The woman's husband believed his wife died due to constant fatigue and stress after giving birth to their little daughter. The poisoner had significant influence over Nim and dared to tell the young mother that she had gained weight during her pregnancy. She sent her a weight loss tablet. On November 23, just a month after giving birth, she sent another tablet, but it was dirty, and Nim couldn't take it. On the 25th of the same month, after taking the second tablet, Nim passed away. At that time, her husband wasn't at home, and her two children were left alone with their deceased mother until a neighbor came at the husband's request. Even though the woman's husband was a medical professional, he didn't suspect M and believe his wife had died of a heart condition they weren't aware of. A renowned forensic expert laments that Thailand lacks a coroner's office, which would be responsible for investigating sudden and suspicious deaths. In his opinion, if such a position existed, similar to those in the UK, Australia, and the US, M's crimes could have been uncovered sooner, and many lives could have been saved. M. Cyanide did not admit her guilt in the crimes, despite the efforts of the police. The lead investigator on the case explained that they only managed to get a partial admission from her regarding her involvement in the death of the latest victim, Syraporn. She made a vague statement suggesting that cyanide had been mixed with illicit substances, which the victim ingested. However, the investigator doesn't believe this story. The reason is quite simple, who would mix cyanide with prohibited substances, especially considering that cyanide is an extremely dangerous poison, and any dosage of it is associated with an immediate risk of death. Due to M's lack of confession, investigators were eager to identify the exact source of the cyanide and understand how she managed to easily access it over such a long period from 2015 to 2023. The cyanide used by the poisoner was the Spanish brand Pan Riac, which is imported to Thailand by one of the 15 Thai companies. The lead investigator believed that someone helped M purchase the poison. It was revealed that her sister owns a pharmacy, but investigators were particularly interested in individuals who bought the substance with the same batch number as the one found in M's house. Among the 100 buyers, Thai actress Ice was identified. Possession of cyanide without permission is illegal in Thailand, and all buyers were summoned for questioning. I submitted to purchasing cyanide online on April 25th for 3,000 baht. She claimed she intended to use it against snakes and monitor lizards that posed a threat to her dogs and even provided a video as evidence. Ice's mother confirmed that the sealed bottle was still at their home and they would bring it to the police station for questioning. The police didn't press charges against Ice. 
Nevertheless, social media users criticized her, insinuating that she might become the next serial killer and referencing her manager's death three years ago, trying to link it to cyanide. This is likely more indicative of the current state of social media rather than any real suspicions about her. As for where M obtained the poison, the police haven't yet disclosed whether they've managed to uncover any information on that matter. After three months, the investigation into the horrific cases of cyanide poisonings came to an end. The chief investigator stated that the police had interviewed over 900 witnesses and examined 26,500 documents. He noted that this is a historic case for Thailand where the suspect planned serial killings over an eight-year period, poisoning victims with cyanide. The symptoms of cyanide poisoning, which medical professionals often mistake for natural health issues, such as stroke or heart attack, prevented doubts from arising in the minds of the victim's relatives. Her main goal was to obtain funds from the victims and eliminate the debts that burdened her. M. Cyanide has been charged with approximately 80 counts, an unprecedented number in Thailand's history. In addition to attempted murder and intentional homicide of 14 individuals, she is accused of food and drug adulteration, theft, and document forgery. Her former lawyer, Thanichir Ichwanawat, and her ex-husband have been charged with aiding and abetting. Her ex-husband was dismissed from his job and arrested after his connection to forged documents and possession of stolen property, particularly victims' jewelry, was discovered. Despite this, he was released on bail and placed under electronic monitoring due to the lack of direct evidence linking him to the murders. Additionally, some leniency was shown towards him after expressing a willingness to meet his ex-wife in prison and convince her to confess to the poisonings. If she confesses to the crimes, she might expect some leniency from the court, otherwise, she could face the death penalty. When news of the charges against M emerged in April 2023, some families of the victims demanded the death penalty for her. However, some legal experts suggested that her life would likely be spared even if she is found guilty. This is due to the Criminal Procedure Code, which was amended in 2007, preventing the execution of a pregnant defendant. Although the death penalty can be postponed for three years, the punishment will automatically be commuted to life imprisonment if her child is alive after three years. Unfortunately, it later became known that M had lost her child, making her ineligible for this provision of the law. The police emphasized that the maximum punishment she faces is the death penalty. Currently, she is held in a women's prison in Bangkok and reportedly enjoys popularity among the inmates. The government has announced impending changes to the regulations for purchasing cyanide in Thailand. Importers will be required to provide detailed information about all buyers, whether individuals, businesses, or factories. Providing the reason for the purchase will be mandatory. If importers fail to provide this information to the police every three months, their licenses will be revoked. If M is found guilty of the numerous poisonings, her name will be added to the list of serial killers in Thailand over the past 100 years. Up until this point, the list had only included male names. The roster of infamous murderers who struck fear into the country's residents includes Boonpeng Heap Lek, also known as Iron Chest Boonpeng, publicly beheaded in 1919 for not only taking victims' lives but also placing bodies in boxes and throwing them into a canal. He killed between two and seven people. Among recent criminals, some kid Pumpwang, known as Kid the Ripper, stands out. He was sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of five masseuses in 2005. Chamlor Nert Songtuan allegedly poisoned at least eight truck drivers in 2011 to 2012 but died before being convicted. The list also features Si Ui, a convicted child killer who was executed in 1959, and the notorious adventurer Charles Sobrage, who managed to escape police custody in the 1970s after murdering 12 people. He earned nicknames like the Bikini Killer due to the attire of his victims and the Serpent for his skilled deception and ability to evade justice. He's the only one whose victim count compares to that of the one woman, who is likely to join this list, M. Cyanide.